My name is Mahelani Uchiyama. I'm the director of the Center for International Dance. I am a descendant of the Yoruba, Ashanti, Wolof, Mandika, and Salaki peoples. And I come to you from the land of the Chichenyo, also known as Oakland, California, where my mountain is Tamapais and my waterway is Sasso Creek. I hold performance traditions of Hawaii, Tahiti, West Africa, and Zimbabwe. Welcome to Dare, Conversations in the Diaspora. Dare is a production of the African American Mbira Project, an initiative to perpetuate the music and tradition of the Mbira within the African American community. With Dare, we aspire to explore the music of Zimbabwe and other performance traditions which exist in the diaspora. Our conversations with artists will focus on their art form and their personal journey. Additionally, we invite you to add your thoughts in the comments section below. Rujeko Dumbuchena is a Zimbabwean-born dancer who specializes in neo-traditional and contemporary African dance. She has taught dance at numerous universities throughout the country and is currently on the faculty of the University of Florida. She was an original ensemble member in Bill T. Jones' musical production of Fela, Off-Broadway, On-Broadway, and in Lagos, Nigeria. She has designed and directed African music and dance camps and taught dance and drum at conferences across the United States. I am delighted to welcome Rujeko Dumbuchena. Hi, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. We are delighted to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. So you are a dancer and a teacher of traditional and contemporary African dance. Tell us a little bit about your background and your journey to this moment. Um, it's, uh, I, I like to reflect back on this journey, especially right now. Um, now, you know, I've just recently moved to uh, Florida, to Gainesville, Florida. I'm, I'm an assistant professor um, and thinking about where it all started is, is, is exciting for me and it helps me celebrate where I am right now. So um, for me, my journey began um, in Lusaka, Zambia, actually, uh, where my parents uh, were in exile uh, during apartheid uh, in southern Rhodesia. And um, we uh, moved to Zimbabwe just before apartheid was finishing. And when uh, schools were integrating, my parents wanted me to go to a private elementary school. So um, I am of that generation where I was the only uh, black student in uh, my elementary school in Zimbabwe. And my saving grace was dance. Dance saved me through those six years. Um, the, they offered ballet classes and my teacher at the time, uh, Mrs. Wainwright, she allowed me to excel as a dancer. She uh, uh, put me on stage, she gave me solos. She, you know, she, you know, had me be an example in the class. Um, and uh, that really, allowed me some solace in, in dance and then also like allowed me to believe in myself and that I had a talent. Um, dance is 
often discouraged as many artists <laughs> know um, who might be watching this video, we were not always encouraged to dance. Um, and so the only, uh, since elementary school, my re-entry into the dance world came when I came to go to college here in the United States. I landed in DC. Prior to my landing in DC, I met Tito Sompa and Mabi Babanye, who are um, pivotal in encouraging me to dance and teaching me um, Congolese styles of dance. And then I landed in DC where uh, I um, started taking uh, Guinea West African dance forms and then dance took over what I thought I was going to do. I came as a visual artist and um, uh, someone who wanted to study women's studies. And um, but that was just the beginning of, of understanding that I could be a dancer and that I actually wanted to be a dancer. Um, so, yeah, that's that's how that's how that journey uh, started and uh, I became a teacher, not really knowing a lot of <laughs> what, I, what I was doing at that time, if I think about my beginning teaching. Um, but now, you know, I've been teaching for all of these years, uh, performing, um, teaching in schools, at universities, and prison systems, and um, performing in many different uh, venues. Um, being parts of uh, the, the African dance community, especially in uh, the Pacific Northwest and um, in the Southwest. Uh, that's a, a, a huge uh, part of who propelled me uh, as an artist, like all of the community that uh, reside in those places and are con committed and moved by um, practicing and performing African dance and, and drum. It, it, dance does have this uh, way of sort of controlling the narrative with certain people. Like you start off thinking you're going to do one thing with your life, and the next thing you know, you're you're teaching dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I also just wanted to just make the observation that um, as a much younger woman than I, you lived in the era of apartheid in Zimbabwe. I did. Yeah, yeah. this was yeah. not ancient history. Yeah. No, yeah, that was uh, it's 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 definitely recent history, um, and it's also a, a type of history that it takes. It's taken me years to untether myself from the trauma of those experiences, um, and I and and the the experiences that I had in you know private school education my children had in their private school education here so so understanding that that you know it's 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 not so far in back in time and that it still um, manifests in the same ways today unfortunately you know um, so for me it's really you know dance has become a way. Um, a tool for me uh, to, for survival and um, to a, a way to allow me to thrive and, and connect with my joy uh, and, and heal a, as well. So my, my, you know, being in, in classes and my Pan-African uh, dance practice, I call it because I, I, any, any dance class from any country uh, from Africa, I will be there. Um, and, uh, that has been for me like my my road to 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 healing and 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 untethering myself from like what I call my colonial mentality. Thinking about Fela Kuti's <laughs> song, you know, yeah. It's it's just really important to to reflect on and to keep in in mind and in context as uh, we are uh, going through what we are going through um, on the planet. It seems, you know, and all over. Uh, the continent of Africa, and I think all over the African diaspora, dance and music historically has been used as a vehicle for healing, yes. as you just mentioned, and and for sharing of knowledge. And it 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 it's a reinforcer. It, it strengthens our connection to each other. It, it strengthens our connection to spirit. Um, could you speak a little bit about the spiritual and cultural significance of dance and music in Zimbabwe? Yes. Well, I think that, you know, when you when you when you think about dance and music, you think of it, you know, as connected. And then you think about the purpose of um, that specific 
song or um, or rhythm and the songs that accompany it, there's there's a purpose. So so the music and dance is intrinsically tied to you know our moral and social and political fabric as Ch Ch Chivano people of Zimbabwe, and um, so it's a part of every part of life. And I think specifically the 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 way that 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 I connect to it and um, my where my interest lies is is in music and dance as a vehicle to um, practice a spirituality um, even though I'm apart from my home right so in its context you will see it performed uh, in ceremonies um, that, our ancestral ceremonies, so invoking the presence of the ancestors and uh, the music and the dance are the tool and the 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 means to opening um, our physical realm to the spiritual realm, and um, and in that space we're able to commune on different levels for different people. You know, you have spirit mediums, you have people that are there to participate you have people that are there to to maybe get some wis some 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 guidance or some healing um so once that happens anything can happen you know anything is possible and healing is definitely um a center for um for what happens uh in 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 those spaces and in those ceremonies um but but you know we've 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 relied on our spiritual uh ceremonies and us and our spiritual leaders our our vadzimu and our monoro for uh for political liberation from apartheid so it's its uses are infinite really i think yeah and for the benefit of those who may not know the terms Badzimu and Mondoro, could you give a? a yeah, question? so just just uh, on a very basic and general level, um, you know, we believe in 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 an an, an omnipresent being, <laughs> I, um, uh, and uh, the our our commute our communication to that being. Uh, is through our ancestors. And so if you imagine um, the realm of spirits, it's, it's, it's actually in, in the Chivano system, it's a very complex system, right? Animal spirits, nature spirits, um, Vadzimu, who are our, our ancestral spirits tied to our family, and then Mondoro spirits who are, are like chief spirits in, in, in some contexts that are responsible for entire regions of the country or the entire country, so their 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 power is great is greater um, in 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 some ways. So they just reside over the entire country, as opposed to you know the family or the clan um, that the Badzimu would. And then you also have Shabe Shabe spirits, which you know for artists and you know people that have like a drive and a passion. Our Shabe is is a spirit that 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 is. Uh, acknowledged as as giving you um, the passion and the drive to continue in your in your in your art practice, right? So uh, so for me, you know, my the, my my dancing, it, it you know, in order to continue into in in this in this type of career, you know, it's like there there's there's a there's a spiritual source that that propels you forward, um, and that's a Shabe spirit. Thank you so much. Um, with regard to the diasporic experience and the experience of Africans on the continent, um, could you speak to a little bit about um, what impact has been on these forms through, let me, st let me restart the question. Mm -hmm. How has African dance and music been impacted by colonization on the continent and enslavement in the new world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, the, 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 there, there's great efforts to, to, you know, when you think about um, subjugating an entire people, what you're, what one of the tactics of colonialism and enslavement is to strip people away from their culture 
and to um, to to have them believe that there's no value in that culture, right? Or that the culture is evil, if you're thinking about the vehicle of colonialism that comes through religion. And um, when, when, when I think about the survival of our art forms and, and, and the fact that me coming from a very Western, you know, um, education system where I wasn't taught anything about my culture, that, that, that in my wanting to re-tap into my heritage, that that I can go immediately to the source. And many of the, the forms are intact, not in their original context. Like a lot of the ways that I've been taught uh, dancers from Zimbabwe have been through people who are performing artists, right? Um, so to me, it's a miracle, <laughs> you know, to me, the survival and the thriving and the, the, the morphing and the, the disguising and the reinventing of all these forms are, are uh, like, I just think it's, 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 it's an ingenious tactic. You see it on the continent and um, in, in, in what is left of, of what we can source. Um, the fact that we still have, we hold ceremonies in the cities and in, 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 in rural areas, then, then when in, in my now becoming a diaspora artist, the learning of the, infinite ways and forms that 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 Africa still shows up everywhere you know I mean when I got here I was surprised at how it showed up in African-American culture um, and and then to then to learn that you have Afro everywhere Afro-Peruvian Afro Belizean <laughs> you know Afro-Mexican um, and it just keeps going on and on and on and every time I, I learn more, you know, uh, through my research and my interaction with incredible artists that are living in the in in the United States today. I I'm I'm always just flawed, and and it goes to, um, you know, to say that you know part of I think our survival. I'm trying to avoid the word resilience nowadays, <laughs> um, but part of our survival, our thriving, our joy, our love, our family, our community, you know, all of those are, are still tied to the art forms that we practice. And then if you look deeply enough and you're taught these, this information, hopefully now people are teaching this fact that, that, you know, when you're, you're practicing jazz, dance, the music, it's 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 rooted in in in, in Africa. When you're you know looking at Afro-Cuban movement and 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 rhythms, you it's rooted you know on the continent of Africa. It's 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 so much of what we interact with today on um, an, an artistic level, on an artistic realm is 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 sourced, you know, in my mind from from um, from the African continent, and we all need to recognize and and um, and kind of give respect to it, and um, and give back to it. I think as well, like keep it keep it alive, keep it thriving, participate in whatever ways we can, support the artists <laughs> and their institutions. <laughs> support the artists, yes, absolutely. Uh, so. What has been your experience of learning and teaching these specific traditions here in the United States? Well, <laughs> it's it's really, you know, I think that I recognize how quickly culture changes, you know? I think that coming into learning and teaching dances, um, I realized how little I knew, right? So how little I I knew from as a result of the type of education I have, as a result of Christianity and and colonialism, um, and so that um, for me the 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 learning and the teaching was a part of me staying connected, right? But then also the other part is that then your context, like 
being in the United States, this is specific entry point and a, and a specific history that then you have to understand and learn as well. You know, coming in, in my first years, I, I had no idea really about um, the, the, the history of racial oppression in America. And um, so I think that some of the ways that I approached my teaching or my performing were maybe insensitive because I didn't have a background or a history understanding about the, the mainly about appropriation, right? Um, so because in the Southwest, the, and, and, and for most of my dance career, my, my, my students, my dancers have been um, white Americans. Um, and so I think that it was a really pivotal moment in my, in my teaching and performing where, where I started to have to understand that sometimes it was appropriate and sometimes it wasn't appropriate, you know, and the reasons why and, and learning to navigate through through that has been a learning journey for me that, um, that I've appreciated. Um, but, you know, you, you come in without the, the knowledge, you have, to, you have to seek it out and, and, and then you have to kind of do the work to, to rebalance, you know, um, rebalance it. So, you know, so that's a part of it. I, but in, in a way, there's, there's still that connection to like how, how powerful it is to share and how impactful it is to share um, Africanist movements and music and how many people are drawn to it is, it was also surprising to me when I got here, but um, you know, makes complete sense. It's the same as why, why I've continued and why I've insisted on, on being um, a dance artist that is focused in, um, in, you know, Zimbabwean, Guinea, and Congolese dance. I believe we have a video of your students yeah. in performance. I, I, I'd love to share that now. Perhaps you might uh, tell us afterwards what, what it is we're seeing. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> but what what was uh, what is the story that we were seeing? Yeah. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of 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 my journey as thinking a little bit more outside of the box from being a, a gig artist that's asked to you know dance for five to twenty minutes. Um, on, in Black History Month celebrations, right? Or at schools, <laughs> um, because I'd started my, I decided to go back to school and do my MFA. And so then you, you're, you're encouraged to think about your creative research and what is, is, is what you want to say, what's inspiring you. And for me, you know, it was an opportunity to 
think about um, my spirituality, think about, oh, this is an opportunity. I'm back in school. I can reconnect with um, and relearn um, you know, what my the, my the spiritual systems are, what the symbolism is behind them, looking particularly um, at, at female um, uh, leaders, ritual uh, practitioners that, 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 that shifted history, that, 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 that shook around like gender norms. Um, and so they were, you know, it's kind of my introduction to uh, uh, rain rainmakers as well, because I wanted it to also connect to nature as well. So I think that it's a good reflection of my my research interests of gender, nature, and ritual, and this constant um, feature of this this uh, matriarchal or powerful female figure, um, and in that was kind of the, the 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 nature that follows her or the nature that's moved through, by her that nature that's in us that's moved by her um was what I was trying to to, <laughs> to express through there um Mary Makeba you know the music I grew up on Mary Makeba so she she's she is that 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 figure for me you know I used in that concert I used um I used uh, Chiwoni So's uh, music as well. You heard that in the first clip. Um, so I try and center it as, around uh, uh, female artists um, uh, that I admire, that are part of my lineage, um, and represent uh, how they're how powerful <laughs> they are, and we are therefore because as reflections of them. So that was that. Um, and those are students of mine from UNM and some students from my community classes. So a ver variety of people that had um, practiced with me for ver various lengths of time. And I think that, you know, I think part of that, 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 that line between appreciation and appropriation, like the, the, the shifting it out of a traditional um, context or meaning, you know, and kind of coming together with the dancers and creating me our own meaning first and then putting movement to that meaning um was w makes more sense for me in working with a diverse group of dancers from different religious and ethnic and racial backgrounds um and and and, and it works for having each dancer kind of be present in their own and but like to have them feel agency in the piece. Um, I thought that it was effective when I made that shift for for really seeing each dancer embodied in their own way, you know, um, not not following, you know, a form because it had to look a certain way. So um, yeah, that was what, what was going on there. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. It makes me want to see the whole the whole evening. Uh, I'll, I'll share it with you. Thank you. I really, really will appreciate that. Um, so what advice can you offer those of us in the diaspora who are, and I, I ask this question a lot of the mm -hmm. people, um, but those of us who are attempting to create and or strengthen our connections to the motherland, what advice can you, can you offer us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I when I was thinking about this question, I thought, oh, I can't offer advice, you know, like I'm, I'm just rejecto, you know, in this little body. But I can, I can, I can say what 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 I've done, right? Because I can relate now, having lived here for so long, the separation, you know, um, and maybe the desire to take back and reclaim and. Um, and and heal, you know, and thrive <laughs> and live a joyful life um, is that I believe that even though we you know we're removed, you know, somewhat, the power of our culture, especially through our art forms, it resides in us. It's it's our inheritance. It's our birthright. And as far away as we are, or as disconnected as we might have been for however many years, we have it in our DNA and we source it easily. You know, once you invest in wanting it, it'll come to you easily is my belief. Um, and that 
um, I had a visit recently from a friend of mine uh, from Zimbabwe and we were kind of talking and she was with, you know, my community over here and we're kind of talking about some of the struggles that, that we have, you know, living in America as black people. And, um, and, and she, you know, she was just like, you know, come, come back home, come back home <laughs> in, 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 in a way that was kind of nonchalant and a little bit joking, but not really pretty seriously, you know? So I feel like part of, my journey, like the journey of the healing, the letting go of the struggle, you know, I've kind of arrived at a different place now as, as, mm-hmm. as a, as a, as a woman, as a black woman, um, as a mother, uh, as an artist, as a teacher, you know, mm-hmm. and I've settled into myself a little bit more, you know, and then you ask yourself, okay, what's next? And, you know, I, I admit to like months of panic, like, what am I going to do? You know, I've been, I've, you know, I've manifested all that I've, asked for like but what next you know then you're left with yourself and to me I have a very strong feeling and I feel it's it's reflected across the board with you know all my black female friends that I talk to and we commiserate with is that you know it's about like time to reclaim (laughs) literally you know a piece of land or a piece of investment or 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 uh, re reignite a connection, start a network, build the relationships, you know, on the continent for us. And it's easier for us to do because of social media and, you know, the tech technologies that, you know, we can use to our advantage, right? So my connection to my, my, my mother's village where I'm, I'm trying to build a, um, sustainable development community there and and then you know hopefully uh um an artist in residence like space that 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 communication of doing that is made so much easier right everyone you know in chile city has a whatsapp phone i can i can i can facilitate things and conversations with the chief with the council and you know they're there, there are ways of building connection and relationship, networking, and developing projects that are are easier. And I think that we need to leap on those opportunities and take them as seriously as as we can. And and um, you know, like for me, it feels feels urgent. You know, it feels like we have to do it now. We have to move now. You know, move on these ideas um, and and these deep connections. You know. Um, we have to move on them now, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I'm going to really take that to heart. (laughs) And uh, Rujeko Dumbuchena, thank you so much for participating in Dare Conversations in the Diaspora. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love, I was glad to have a second conversation with you, um, you know, from our first SimFest conversation. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate all your questions. I appreciate all the work that you do and the connection that you keep to Zimbabwe and to our culture. And um, so thank you, Tatenda. Oh, yeah, it is my my honor and, and um, my joy. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today. If you liked our program, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to receive future notices of upcoming shows. If you'd like to support our efforts, please consider a donation to the Center for International Dance. We have provided a link in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts about our program or your own journey with reclaiming your cultural heritage, whatever that may be. Dare, Conversations in the Diaspora, is a program of the Mahea Uchiyama Center for International Dance, a nonprofit organization dedicated to fostering cross-cultural understanding in our community through dance and music. We will be back next month in conversation with vocal activist and recording artist, Melanie Demore. Until then, be well, stay safe, and keep the music in your heart. <laughs>